Hello you lovely people. Welcome back to my channel for another Evercade kind of video guys. Yeah another Evercade video guys but uh, yeah yeah what we could possibly dream of having on the Evercade again guys video. Uh, this time this was uh, kind of asked for by one of my fantastic subs and he's also a Patreon guys. Uh, yeah fantastic guy Nate. He is from over the pond, and I tell you what, we were having a conversation about. Um, he said, for instance, say you're bored with the cartridge you got at the moment, the cartridges you got at the moment for your Evercade, and you could just reach down and get that uh, gold cartridge, guys, um, that everybody would probably absolutely love on the Evercade, guys. One put together by the Evercaders, the users of the beautiful little machine guys and you could reach down grab that and bang it in your system and have a play on it. So basically it was a hypothetical question of what we would like to see on there. So what would I like to see on a cartridge that has got every, you know, just all the games that are on it, 20 titles that are fantastic and that I've picked myself, guys, in a sense. Um, so, for instance, if Blaze would turn around and say, right, we're going to run a competition. All of you, you know, enter the competition, chuck in 20 games that you'd like to see on the cartridge, and then the winner gets it made. Like that. Like I said, hypothetical, guys. Um, probably never, ever going to happen, but never say never. Um, and, yeah, what would I like to see on there? Well, obviously, there is literally thousands of games I would like to see on such an Evercade cartridge, guys. But See, the thing is, you've got to narrow it down in quite a few ways. Number one, will the Evercade run it? Now, in this 20, guys, there's probably a couple there that are pushing the limit. Yeah, very much. Um, so, yeah, you've got to think about would the Evercade be able to run it? Obviously, there's always going to be licensing issues, but we're going to ignore that, and we're just going to go for... 20 fantastic titles that I would like to see. And, of course, uh, will they appeal to many people? Now, again, because you're the competition winner, the hypothetical competition winner, um, that doesn't matter, does it? It's your choice, isn't it? So, yeah. So we narrowed it down to that it has to be able to run on the Evercade in the first place. And then, like I said, a couple of them uh, probably wouldn't, guys, to be in all fairness. But here we go, guys. This is 20 games I would like to see on an Evercade Gold cartridge because I won the competition of getting 20 games onto a cartridge and Blaze came out blazing and did it. Right, okay, so we're going to start, guys, with the Game Boy Advance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you from each system, there might only be one title from that system, but in this case, we've got, uh, I do believe, he's just checking five for the uh, Game Boy Advance I'd like to see there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you them, and then I'm going to show you their intros or a little bit of footage or something like that of each one. So, guys, I mean, the Game Boy Advance has got a ton of bloody sodding games on there that are great. But I would love to see, on an Evercade Gold cartridge, I would love to see Crazy Taxi catch a ride oh i mean crazy taxi is fantastic i love crazy taxi especially on the dreamcast of course um and the arcade is fantastic but i'll tell you what the game boy advance crazy taxi might be graphically under par but it still plays like a treat and that would run happily on the evercade so yeah crazy taxi catch a ride uh, then next, guys, is a Lady Sia. Uh, Lady Sia is a fantastic, you know, just platformer, uh, hack and slash. Oh, it is beautiful. Now, uh, it was released by TDK, which is the tape manufacturer back in the day, of course. Um, they're a bit up and down, but they pulled it out the bag with this one, guys, with graphic graphic is oh the graphics on it are just awesome they're almost like hand-drawn graphics it's, it's just a beautiful game and it would run like a dream on the evercade so that's number two from the game boy advance titles i would love to see on the evercade 
Number three, you've seen it on here before. It's Mr. Pants, guys. I love puzzlers, and the Evercade is perfect for puzzle games. Now, this is the very English, very British, shall we say, uh, Mr. Pants. Uh, the humour in it is very, very British, and it's all about big pairs of pants. <laughs> it's not really. It's a puzzle game. But, yeah, it is just gorgeous, and it would be brilliant on the Evercade. Uh, the next one is another puzzler, guys. It's... Uh, I always have to look at this one. Kuru Kuru Kurin. Uh, it's the one that I've shown before where you get into this little plane thing and he has to go around the maze and get around the corners and things like that. Again, it's a puzzler that is gorgeous and it would just run like a dream on the Evercade. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, you know, where you've got to turn your wings round to get around the corners and things. Well, you'll see one you in a minute. Again, it would be fantastic on the Evercade. The next, guys, <laughs> it's another puzzler, guys. Um, it's Stinky Blocks. Again, I've shown it on my channel many times before. It's just a sodding lot of fun. Um, you know, just, oh, it really, really is. Graphically, it's very childish looking, very colourful, cutesy. But I tell you what, as you progress through this game, it gets a lot harder. And it's basically about joining up blocks of colours. And that's as simple as that. And that is what makes this perfect for the Evercade. It's a pick up and play one. It is a gorgeous bloody game. It's been on every kind of bloody platform there is. Why not the Evercade guys? Fantastic. But right, now we're going to move on and show you the video footage guys. Like I said. So these are the five titles from the Game Boy Advance that should be on this gold Winner's cartridge, guys. Here we go.
Absolutely brilliant. They would be perfect for the other kid. Right, now we're going to move on, guys. And uh, this is a case of where there's only two games, uh, one on each platform. So what I've done is I've banged them together, guys. So we're starting with the 3DO, guys. Another puzzler and a fantastic one. It's one of the best games on the 3DO, in my opinion. Very Tetrisy. As I said, it's a puzzler. It's tripped, guys. Uh, fantastic game. Oh, I just wish it would have made it to another system. It is blinding and it would suit the Evercade down to the ground. Now, we know the Evercade can uh, run PS1 games. So this would be perfect because the 3DO would run like a dream on there, hopefully. Um, so yeah, Tripped, guys. What a fantastic bloody puzzle game. Very Tetris-like, as I say, but an absolute blast. And then... From the Philips Video Pack, guys, we have Crazy Chase. It's that Pac-Man clone. It wasn't so much a Pac-Man clone in the end, was it? Um, fantastic, where you're going around the maze, you're a caterpillar eating all the bits, and then, you know, you've got your little character that you are actually not the caterpillar. You're the uh, little Pac-Man type character who goes behind the old caterpillar and eats his segments. Don't go in front of him because he'll eat you. Um, but, yeah... Again, a fantastic game that would run, oh, so smoothly. Smooth as butter, guys, on the Evercade. As we know, it, uh, oh, it does a fantastic job at 2600 games. So, yeah, no problem whatsoever with the Philips Video Pack. And what a fantastic title, guys. Right, so I'm going to show you the footage of those two. With it only being the two, we might as well bang the two systems together. Here we go, guys.
easy game. I don't know what the numbers at the bottom mean. I know the question marks are supposed to be where you put in your name, but I don't know how to put your name in. Ah, uh, right, yeah, that's something you would do on the keyboard. Yeah. Because, of course, this machine has a full keyboard on it. It's very much uh, like a PC as well, in a, in a sense. Like a, com I mean, a microcomputer. As you can see, it looks like Pac-Man when he's eating, and he goes into this almost like a like a little tornado, doesn't he? <laughs> Zooming around the screen. Oh, that's close. Oh, awesome, awesome, both of them. Tripped is fantastic, colourful, and just hard enough for as a puzzler, guys. And then Crazy Chase, wow, what a take on Pac-Man, and just takes it up a notch, as you saw it was the old footage from me and Josh playing it. Um, next guys, we've got a fantastic console, a handheld, so perfect guys, and it is the uh, Pocket Neo Geo Colour guys. Um, how perfect would they run on the Evercade? And I tell you, it was quite difficult to choose just a few from it. Um, I wanted to keep it to about three, which is exactly what I did, guys. Now, we've all said this before, we want to see Sega games on there anyway. We would love to have a Sega cartridge, whether it was Game Gear or something like that, on the uh, Fantastic Evercade. Well, starting us off with the Pocket Neo Geo Colour games is the Sonic, sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure. Oh my God, is it a fantastic, fantastic Sonic game. Built from the ground up, guys, and with a slightly more edgy looking Sonic, but it's got all the things we love about the original Sonic games in this handheld, guys. And it looks stunning. And that's all there is to be said. It would run on the Evercade fantastically. It really, really bloody would. Then the next one, guys, is Dark Arms. Oh, we know the Evercade is fantastic with RPGs. There's so many of them on there already on the different cartridges that are out. Wouldn't that be stunning to have Dark Arms on there? which is the best RPG on the flipping little handheld, guys, on the Pocket Neo Geo Colour. It's got atmosphere. It's just dark enough to, to oh, make it interesting and gritty. And it is a fantastic little RPG with dungeon, dun, dungeon, <laughs> dungeon crawling elements and uh, hack and slash to boot. It is a stellar bloody title. That would just oh, be a marriage made in heaven on the Evercade. And the third one, guys, is Puyo Pop. Now, I love Puyo Pop whatever way it comes, but the Pocket Neo Geo colour version is stellar for a little handheld. So it would be, again, perfect for the Evercade, guys. Oh, I love Puyo Pop. And where on the Switch, where they mixed it with Tetris as well, oh, it just blows my mind. I love it, love it, love it. I love it so much, guys. I've even got the Japanese versions. And uh, I just did all my way through the menus to play the game. Um, but yeah, Poyo Pop, oh, is, it's not the Japanese version either, guys. It's completely already translated. And it would just smoothly, smoothly like butter again, guys, go on to the Evercade. Right, let's have a look at those three titles, guys.
<laughs> oh, aren't they cool? Oh, you, you could just see them on the Evercade, couldn't you? They would be perfect on there, guys. These Pocket Neo Geo Color games, guys, are fantastic. And to have Sonic on there, wouldn't that be blinding? If it was this version as well, with that slightly grittier looking Sonic. So, yeah, fantastic. Right, moving on, though, to, um, like I said earlier, guys, we know PS1 titles can run on there. So I picked just two for this fantastic gold winner's cartridge from Blaze. That, you know, that isn't in existence, really, but we would just love that if Blaze did that as a competition. But, yeah, two PS2 titles. Uh, PS2. PS1 titles. Yeah, that would be pushing it, PS2. So, yeah, <laughs> two PS1 titles, guys, and they're fantastic. The first one, and there's probably no chance of it. Oh, I wish there would be. I really do. Silent Hill. Oh, my true and utter love of survival horror games started with Silent Hill. So it's a no-brainer for me that I would love to have that on the portable. I know we've been able to do it with the, uh, the Vita and, of course, the PSP. You could download them off the store. Um, so yeah, you could play Silent Hill, the first title, quite happily. But I would love to see that on the Vita. It's still, to this day, got one of the best soundtracks ever. Well, intros. And um, I, oh, it just keeps you on the edge of your seat, guys. It is fantastic. So yeah, Silent Hill is the first one. And the polar opposite is Silent Hill, guys, for the second title for the PS1. And that is uh, Kulanoa. Door to Phantom Mile. I've always got to check that Phantom Mile. Um, what a beautiful flipping platformer. I tell you what, it is so underrated and so expensive now if you try to get a copy on the uh, PS1, guys. I was lucky. I picked one up when it was in the bargain bin, guys. Unbelievably. They couldn't flog them at the time, and I picked one up at the time. I was so glad I did. I loved it then, and I still love it just as much now that it sells for a packet. My God, would that run fantastic on the flipping Evercade. It would be a stunner, guys. But what are the chances of it? I don't know. I really don't know what the chances are, guys. But I oh, I can but dream to have Klonoa on the, uh, the Evercade, guys. Right, let's take a look at them um, back in a sec.
Wow. We, we, we can dream, guys. We can dream. Wouldn't they be beautiful on the Epic here, guys? Just those two titles already. And there's a ton more, isn't there, on the PS1, guys? But, guys, we're moving on to the system that just had to be here. Now, if you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that the Dreamcast is my favourite home system of all time. But we got no chance of putting that onto the Evercade. Not really. Um, but my favourite handheld of all time is a very obscure handheld that a lot of people haven't even heard of, guys. The Gizmondo from Tiger Telematics. I'm in love with that system from the day it was conceived. Um, I've got two of them in my collection. Um, I've got every single released game and unreleased game. I love it. Love it, love it to death with its story of Swedish Mafia and con merchants. Um, yeah, but I tell you what, for such a tiny library of games, guys, it had some stellar titles. And what I've done, guys, is I've just picked two. Two, it could have been so much more, but these two would be stellar on the uh, Evercade, guys. And I've said many times before, even on... The Evercade uh, live se uh, sessions that we do. If you caught them, you'll have heard me say that. I would love to see a Gizmondo cartridge where they've got all the games, that, you know, put them onto one cartridge, and wouldn't that be fantastic? Well, the chances of that ever happening are probably bugger all. Um, but yes, guys, in my winning, fantastic Blaze cartridge, my gold cartridge, I would choose from the Gizmondo library, guys. I would choose. Sticky Balls, again a puzzler guys, it's a bit of a pinball uh, colour matching, oh it's just gorgeous, it's gorgeous, it's got everything you'd want from a puzzler, oh, and a kind of pinball game in a way, well it's not really pinball, how would you describe it, well you're going to see the video in a minute anyway, but I suppose a bit like snooker, but the balls stick together and you try and match the colours. You're going to see in a minute. Fantastic game. As I said, very cutie looking. But don't let it deceive you. It is fun all the bloody way. And it does get difficult, guys. <sighs> what a gorgeous game. One of my absolute favourites on the Gizmondo. And then the second one, guys. Now, way back on the microcomputers, this made an appearance. But when the Gizmondo was launched, guys, they took this title... By the original creator, they beefed up the bloody graphics to a hundred percent. This is a gorgeous flipping game, guys. Oh my god, how they took that and made it into this stunning title that it is on the Gizmondo is beyond me. And then, after it was on the Gizmondo and everything went bust and blah blah blah. Someone only went and took it, stuck it on the PSP and downgraded all the bloody graphics again. And made it look pants. So this is the definitive version of this game, guys. And you can only get it on the Gizmondo. This gorgeous version, only on the Gizmondo, guys. And I'm talking about Trailblazer. Oh, what a fantastic game. All you're doing is shooting along as this ball... Trying to avoid all the obstacles and you're going so fast and the music is brilliant. Oh, have a look. Here's the videos, guys, of these two fantastic titles.
Yeah, already. Oh, and again. <laughs> Run out of time. Well, I'll tell you guys, it wouldn't have been me, would it, if there would have been uh, no Gizmondo titles there. There had to be at least a couple, and there could have been a hell of a lot more. But I tried to keep it down to two. <sighs> stunners, guys, stunners. And I can but dream. Right, now we're going to move on to a more uh, mainstream system, shall we say. A little bit more, anyway. Certainly here in Blighty, it was extremely popular. Brazil. Oh, it just blew it out of the water, guys, everything else. We're talking about the master system. Of course, it wasn't as popular in North America, but here in Europe and in Brazil, it just rocketed, guys, rocketed. So, yeah, it was very difficult to choose just a couple of titles, but I have. I've chosen a couple of titles because there's some stellar titles on there. But these two would be a marriage made in heaven again on Blaze's little handheld, guys. Right. Starting with what I consider to be the best version of this game, guys. Now, it's been on the Mega Drive as well. But the version I have nostalgia goggles for and love dearly is on the Master System. It is <sighs> Castle of Illusion, guys, starring Mickey Mouse. Oh, my God. The hours of my life. I wasted playing this flaming game, guys. I adore it. It is one of my all-time favourite platformers. I do enjoy the Mega Drive version, but the Master System version, for me, is the definitive version. I love it, love it, love it. And my God, would it run beautifully on the Evercade. But of course, so would the Mega Drive version. Both versions would be brilliant to see on the uh, fantastic winner's cartridge. The gold cartridge would be fantastic to see either of them on there. But personally speaking, I would rather see the Master System version because that is the one I so fondly remember. Oh, gorgeous game. If you haven't played it, guys, you've got to do it. Go and play it. Or oh, play either version, Mega Drive or Master System. It's gorgeous, whatever. Uh, then the next one, guys, is one that has gone up so much in value. And I'll tell you why. Because what Sega did was they took... This what was a mascot at one point. And uh, after releasing it onto physical cartridge, they decided to uh, on the uh, Master System Model 2 to take away Snail like they had, or Snail Maze or whatever, they had on the original Master System and they replaced it with Alex the Kid. I think it was replaced with Sonic the Hedgehog in some places, but the one I had was replaced with Alex the Kid. And that then made the physical one stop being produced. And uh, it's become very, very pricey now. I'm talking about Alex the Kid in Miracle World, of course. Oh my God, is this, again, so nostalgic to me, guys. Because when I first got my Master System 2, um, the only game I had at the time was Castle of Illusion. And then Alex the Kid built in. So I played those two games for a very long time until I had enough money to go and buy some more games. That's why I've got such fond memories of those two games. And Alex the Kid is no exception to the rule. I beat it and beat it and beat it. And of course, um, oh, it's just fantastic. It's, it's the Mars System's take, basically, on Mario, isn't it, in a way? Apart from you've got all those vehicles that you can use, like your motorbike, your helicopter and so on. It is a beautiful game and there is no way around it and again it would run beautifully flawlessly i'm absolutely certain on the evercade right shall we have a look at these two then here we go guys
fantastic. Wow, does that bring back memories, guys. And I still play them to this day. Oh, I just adore them, adore them. <sighs> right, moving on now. We're going to have to bang these two together again, guys. Uh, one's on the PSP, one's on the SNES. Now, the PSP, this, this is pushing it a bit, guys, because we all know the PSP is just a slightly underpowered PS2. Um, so, yeah, what are the chances of this ever running on the Evercade? Probably no hope whatsoever. Probably Bob Hope, guys. But, like I said, it's my winning cartridge. It's my gold cartridge that I've just pulled out. Just opened. To, just took the cellophane off it. And I banged that old cartridge in there. And, of course, I won a competition where I could ask for anything I wanted on this Evercade cartridge. So, yeah, I'm pushing the boundaries a bit here. Um, it's my all-time favourite actual PS2 game. Because it's just a port of that. Oh, Shadow of Memories, guys, which is my all-time favourite PS2 game ever. Had a name change, ported over to the PSP, and uh, only released in North America and Japan. Funny enough, in Japan, a Shadow of Memories still, weirdly. But in North America, uh, the English-speaking version, if you like, um, it became Shadow of Destiny. Now, this is a fantastic game, guys. And oh my god, I know it's probably never going to run on the Evercade, but it would make my world if it did. I know I can play it on my PSP. I've got the North American version of it. I can play it on my PSP quite happily, but I'd love to play it on the Evercade, guys. I'd love it, love it, love it. And uh, yeah, it's a murder mystery, guys, but with a difference. You're the one who's been murdered, and you're investigating your own murder but going through time guys you go way back to medieval days and you're trying to find out who's killed you and stop the scenario happening and uh yeah and this little uh demon kind of creature is helping you along the way or is he helping you along the way as you try to stop your murder at all different times in history it is just fantastic guys and it's based in a little german village so i'm bound to love it aren't i so yeah Shadow of Destiny, guys, or <laughs> whatever way you want to call it. Oh, what a fantastic game. I love it to bits, and it would be fantastic. Then, guys, over to the SNES. For a game I've only just shown, actually, on what I would love to see on an Activision collection, guys. But I'm going to have to put it here again, because this would seriously have to be on a winning cartridge, guys. My gold cartridge from Blaze. It would have to be there. Because it's one of the best games I've come across in a long bloody time. I'm very late to the party with this one. But I sodden love it. It is. Let's get this right. Strike Gunner. Then GT. Sorry. STG. Right. Let's get that right again guys. Strike Gunner. STG. Oh my god. It's just perfection. This, this game just knocked my bloody socks off. It is gorgeous. What a flipping gorgeous game, guys. Oh, it's a shoot 'em up and a half. And yeah, we already know from my Activision video, this would be perfect on the Evercade. And I think everybody agreed. What a stunning title. If they could snag that one, guys. Wow. They could even put that on just a double title cartridge for me, guys, with some other gem. Wouldn't be Shadow of Memories, but or Shadow of Destiny. Um, but yeah, with another fantastic title, guys. And be I'll be straight there buying that. It is fantastic this game. So yeah, here we go, guys, with the footage of these two put together.
Wow. Oh, dear me, eh? Wouldn't that be fantastic, guys? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, I know there's no chance. No chance of, uh, yeah, Shadow of Destiny. Shadow of Memories, whatever you want to call it. Um, getting on there, guys. But, oh, it would be absolutely fantastic. And then for Strike Gunner. Oh, that is a beautiful game, guys. Um, what a stunning shoot em up. Um, I know I've already included it into an Activision cartridge, guys, but it would suit this one as well because it'll be me choosing them for my winning gold cartridge, guys, from Blaze. Um, yeah, two fantastic titles, guys. Oh, stunning. But time to move on to the last lot, guys. Yeah, the last lot, two titles, guys. Now, Blaze have sat back and they've managed to achieve everything for me. They even scratched their heads and hmm, how can we get Shadow of Destiny on that cartridge. Right, bang, there, we've done it, we've managed it. We sacrificed a bit here and there, but we've managed it. So I'm happy as Larry. Right, you've got two more games to choose, says Blaze. Well, I'm going to choose two Mega Drive games, I'm going to say to them. They'll be like, oh, right, yeah, what, what are they then, you know? And then I'm probably going to shock them, guys. This is two titles that I have featured on my channel before. Now, the first one is actually an advertising game, guys, in a way. You know, there was a big thing, wasn't there, at the time for for companies like Coca-Cola, uh, Cheetos, and what have you, to have games made. Well, this is no exception to the rule, guys. This is a virgin game, made game, but it's for 7-Up. It's Cool Spot. <sighs> what a gorgeous flipping platformer. Do not let it deceive you that it's a 7-Up game, guys. Wow. It's that spot off the front of the 7-Up label at the time. Beautiful, bloody platformer. You're just this red spot with trainers, walking along the beach, shooting your bloody crabs and shells and knows what else, you know. Beautiful, bloody game. Gorgeous looking, gorgeous sounding, flipping awesome. If you've never played Cool Spot, what's wrong with you? Go and play it. And yes, Oh, I would love to see that on the Evercade. There'd be no problems running it whatsoever. Gorgeous game. And then the second one, guys. I mean, you know, if that wouldn't be good enough already, having Cool Spot on there from the uh, Mega Drive, guys. The last one is... I had to look down for a second there, guys, to get the first bit... I keep getting it wrong all the time. Panorama Cotton, guys. Now, this was released in Japan. So this would be a real doozy to have on the Evercade, because not only would it have to be translated, um, what are the chances of getting the cotton game, guys? Oh, wouldn't that be fantastic? Cute them up to extreme with this one, guys. I mean, I love every single one of the cotton games, guys. Um, they are fabulous. They are fabulous on the uh, Turbo Graphics, stroke pc engine they are fantastic whatever way you get them um and this is a fantastic take on it guys because instead of being a you know your usual side scrolling or vertical this one is literally panoramic as they say it is first person um you do see your characters so it's not really first person but yeah fantastic you are flying along and you're shooting dun, dun, dun. Oh my god, gorgeous flipping game. As you're about to find out as we look at the last lot of video footage, guys, of them playing. Here we go, guys. Fantastic.
Well, I think that just rounds it all off, guys, doesn't it? 20 fantastic titles that would be on a winning cart from Blaze after they ran a competition. The gold cart, guys, for all the Evercade users out there. Those are the 20 I would pick, guys. <clears throat> oh, I mean, if I sat there, I would have umpteen bloody gold cartridges, but I had to make up 20. And that's what I went for, guys. It might surprise you. I don't know. Comment below, does it surprise you that that is the 20 I would choose on a winning cartridge or a cartridge made by fans of the Evercade and what they chose? Well, that's my personal choice. Of course, a lot of people might have a completely different choice, and I'm sure they would as well, because it's tailor-made for me. So, yeah, um, I would be kissing Blaze's backside by this time if they pulled that one out of the bag, wouldn't I? Especially the Gizmondo games, flipping heck. Anyway, guys, that is my pick for a gold-winning Evercare cartridge. And thank you, Nate, so much for putting this idea in my head to make this video because I have absolutely loved doing it. It is fantastic and I just want to give you a big, big round of applause minute, Nate, for that one. Fantastic idea that you gave me there. Thank you so much. Right guys, there we go. That is that video done and I'm sure it's gone to quite a length. Hopefully you stuck with me to the end and that you enjoyed it. What a fabulous idea, brilliant. So there you go guys, and my kind of Evercade video, if I won a gold cartridge from Blaze and they told me to bang 20 games on it. There you go. Let me know, what 20 would you pick? You know what to do, comment below guys, or it doesn't have to be 20. Pick five, whatever. What would you choose to put on a cartridge if you had the chance of winning, the chance of banging anything you wanted on that cartridge? What would you choose? Let me know in the comments, guys. Right, and with that, I'm just going to say the usuals. If uh, you're not subscribed already, please drop me a sub. Give me a thumbs up. And, of course, tap the bell icon and the all icon to get any notifications whatsoever. And again, guys, if you would like to check out my Patreon page, it is linked below as well. Head over there, I have a video about why I started it in the first place. And of course, then you can decide whether to uh, join me on my Patreon journey. And with that, I'm going to love you and leave you. What a blinding video. Thank you again, Nate. Of will us in. Tschüss. And goodbye, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.